call the meeting to order at 6.05. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Um, who is on the uh, phone call ending in 3.8? Yeah, you. I, I just, if you could mute, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, item number three, the consent agenda. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, August 5th. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Um, second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, public comment. That's us. You guys Thank you. Oh. All right. Thanks for, for having us first. Um, my name is Lindsay. I'm Sylvia. I live in Stockbridge, and uh, my child goes to Stockbridge Elementary, pre-K. My name is Bethna Rush, and I'm also from Stockbridge. I have a child in Stockbridge School, first grade right now. And then next year, my younger will come, hopefully, to pre-K. Excellent. Yep. Beth and myself, along with several other parents from mostly Stockbridge, have over the last um, six months been in discussion with Lindy about enhancing the existing Farm to School initiative. In addition to Farm to School, also expanding that to Forest to School um, through your outdoor education program, which we really appreciate and we love, and we, we see that as the vision going forward to bring those connections of outdoor world, farm, food, forest to our children. So we'd like to request uh, your thoughts and your support also on strategizing together. How we can en enhance the farm and forest school to both of our schools, Rochester and Stockbridge. There are so many, <sighs> But yeah, potentials. There are existing programs and outdoor education um, retreats for educators. There are lots of grant funding through both federal and state of Vermont that we'd really love to get together, pull everyone in to, to really figure this out so it's not piecemealed. We want to make this a stronger program, and um, that, that's just the start of it. So we'd like to just hear if you're interested, and if so, we'd love to get on your agenda for next month. Excellent. Um, well, our school has, our board's always been very much in support in our outdoor education, and um, I'm sure you know Amy Braun and how we have provided her a lot of support in what she's been developing, um, and what you guys are talking about sounds wonderful. I mean, to we've always wanted to expand as much as we can within our means. Um, we are actually having a retreat the end of this month and um, discussing how we can enhance our programming is one of the items on that uh, retreat. But uh, the other members of the board speak, but definitely bring the kids outside and into forest and farming and farm to table and, and um, gardening, I think we're all very supportive. No, I agree. Um, I think too, one of the big, big things is uh, that we discussed with some of those. It's a bonus, you know, educational opportunities mm -hmm. is that it's hard to fit into the schedule. We know mm -hmm. that, but we've been trying to find a way around that. And I think part of that is community members getting involved. And so I certainly think as a board, we can definitely support it and do what we can do to help. Um, but we definitely need people like yourselves to organize and like it's, as far as like the gardens that are going on and stuff. It's like, yeah, you know, I think we can try and work together to figure out a way to implement it and to say the, the kids, you know, time at school or whether it's after school program or whatever, working in the garden. Um, and that's some of the things that we've thought about is like maybe some of these things are more implemented during the after school program um, because we can't find the, all that time during the day <laughs> to do all of it. 
um, which I understand. Um, but I totally am for it. I know JC and I talk a lot about implementing more into the out outdoor ed program and stuff. So I'm definitely willing to to help in any way I can, with, as a board member and as a as a parent. <laughs> yes, go. Yeah, I, uh, you've got a very supportive board. We all like to be outdoors more than indoors, to tell you the truth, uh, unless it's raining or and uh, the snow isn't good to ski. But um, the timing of your uh, visit with us is a good one. Um, we're starting, already starting to be thinking about our next year's budget. And um, the importance of budget, budgets basically fund the programs that we want to achieve. Uh, fulfill our mission and uh, and carry out the steps that we think are necessary and essential for the education and well-being of our students. Um, and so we're we're talking about what can we what more can we do, and then how do we do it, and how do we fund it, and how much is it? All those sorts of things that uh, I love creating ideas, but it's we also have the responsibility of putting some meat and bones on that and that is you know uh, Patrick talks about which is really a point not to interfere with our other educational so how do we expand that envelope and do it well and effectively and that's where we need help um, by you and other people thinking about that as we go forward in the budgetary budgeting season and I think um, now's the time for creative thinking and then we zero from creative to, and we need to consult with our administrative and teaching team and our set, and then go from creative to what seems to make the most sense, how do we do it, and therefore how we can pay for it. So I commend you for being here. Uh, yeah, it's music, um, but we also, um, we need some work to do to carry it out. And we're the last board that says, oh yeah, oh yeah, and then forget about it. If we're going to try to do it, we're going to try to figure out how do we do it that makes sense and, and fits what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, you make a very, you all have made a very good point that um, by having enthusiastic um, parents, community members that are willing to work towards this, um, it's can get it off the ground a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I think that's it. It's, I think we're, like, coming together to strategize on roles and responsibilities is mm -hmm. the first step. And that's what we're up for. Yeah. Um, well, we're having that commitment from several of the families of, the, of children in Rochester and Stockbridge right now, just Stockbridge, but can we we'll outreach yeah. and yeah. But definitely, our board is in support of it, and Lindy is our you know the point person mm -hmm. to she's she did, <laughs> she oversees what's going on on the day to day level of the school, so. Yeah, I think one point that Lindsay's making is as we pursue more grant opportunities, it will take, we'll have to bring it forward to the board to get your support. Got There's it. a lot yes. of those opportunities oh, totally. in the farm Understood. to school and for, am I right about that? Yeah. Thank farm you. to yeah. school and yeah. forest to school world that like we can all work together. Like I can work with this great group of parents, but it also requires your support. So we'll have to bring Absolutely. it forward to you guys as yeah. we move forward opportunities to I mean, and like I, I spoke of after, after school um, uh, program, but it could be, be, it could honestly be a completely separate entity from that. And it could just be like a gardening club, whatever club. group okay. that gets together three days a week, whatever, for certain periods of the year or however, you know, and kids can sign their kids up to be at it. We maybe have the appropriate, um, I love it. Uh, yeah. adult supervision or something. A lot of good different ideas that to yeah. pursue. Yeah. Yes, Robert. So how do we get the Rochester parents working yeah. with the Stockbridge parents? Uh, the PTOs are probably the best avenue right mm -hmm. now. They've already done some things together, so that's probably the best connector. Um, mm -hmm. And there are parents that I think in Rochester would uh, just be interested in tackling this project and in, in support of it. Every parent has their niche from where they want to support, and yeah. I think there's some that are probably we can connect. Absolutely, JC. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that as um, you know, Lindsay, as you um, continue to develop your ideas and um, look into creative ways of implementing these programs, 
I think it would be helpful for us as a board to see different models and how um, these types of programs can be integrated into the regular day. And, you know, schools are doing this all over the country and all over the world in, in lots of creative ways. And I think it would help um, for me and probably the rest of the board to be able to see what those models look like um, that you're interested in. And especially as we go into our retreat, that's something I was looking forward to talking about. Um, and I also wanted to say, I, I, uh, to in support of your your work, I have been hearing a lot of um, a lot of interest in Rochester from parents who um, have been looking outside of the district to other other schools because they have programs like this that are more, um, you know, implemented. So um, the more information we can get, I think, the better. Uh -huh. Great. Uh, so going forward, uh, would it be helpful? We have a currently we have a, a Google Drive that we has shared amongst several families, where we're compiling these examples mm -hmm. of what other schools and entities are doing. Should we just build on that, or do we want to make a space or a place under the school to <clears throat> begin sharing this with the board versus just my Google Drive? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think this is a good opportunity for us to maybe have one or two of the board members work with them and just have a, a special um, task force or whatever for it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like the committee. Well, just so maybe somebody just to, with yeah, to clarify, so the board can either create a committee or the administration create a task force and invite a board member to Okay. Yeah. So okay. we got to get okay. clear about that because that, that's well, it's a board committee. committee. No. committee. Well, I don't think we should do a board committee because then you have to warn all meetings. Oh, oh, so so the meetings, the meetings, the meetings, <laughs> audio recording meetings. Yeah. Yeah. So the task force. Tell me how I can help. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it sounds like we have a board member that will volunteer to yeah. to be part. Or maybe even two, which is fine yeah. on your board. Yeah. What, what I was going to recommend is. Is um, I, I think this so to offer support from the SU perspective, I think this is good work for Mary Shell, our community school coordinator, to be involved in yeah. okay, to help organize this. I mean, that is her role to organize community with schools. So I'd like her to be kind of a point person on this group. Yeah. Uh, certainly, Lindy and the teachers will be part of that. I just I'm looking to have her or be the facilitator and not Lindy sure. taking on another group. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also think um, I would offer as resource, um, we have a farm to school coordinator at the Bethel and, and, and Royalton campuses now, Francie Slater, who I think could also work with this group and be, would be willing to help kind of navigate some of this work. Um, and so I would be happy, I have a meeting with Mary tomorrow, I'd be happy to connect with Mary and then Mary can maybe connect Lindy can connect Mary with our parent group, and then we can start to get some organization to some meetings going. Um, and then it makes sense to continue to have this be a standing agenda item and a task force report out, as we okay. know. That would be my recommendation for the board to consider as kind of an avenue forward. I think that makes sense, right? Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Myself. Casey's really excited. Yeah, I think, <laughs> great. I think that sounds that sounds good. Great. Uh, I'll, I'll put it on Mary's radar tomorrow. Mary's been out for a little bit due to some health okay. reasons, but she's back now. So, awesome. so what do you all think? We appreciate this. Uh, Where it sounds like there's enthusiasm here and. Again, the whole strategizing is going to be the big, big investment mm -hmm. and figuring out who, who's going to do what and um, our path forward. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. And, and yes, overall, what you'll do. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank you. Community. Thank you guys for coming. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. You're welcome to stay or you're welcome to go. That's fine. <laughs> you stay for a little while and get them to leave when you want. That's fine too. Well, you know, we're, we're casual about it, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, and you'll, you'll have them on the agenda next. Yep. Okay. So next meeting. Okay. All right. Um, uh, is there any uh, other um, public comment? So 
Okay, we do have another public comment at the end. If there is more public comment, is there any board comment? Oh, the only other public comment, sorry, I apologize, Amy, I had said I would mention this. Uh, I okay, did, we can go back. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I did forward the board an email that Amy and I received as, as um, public comment and correspondence with the board um, from Keith. Um, I'm going to butcher Keith's last name right now. So Spilecki. Spilecki. Yeah. Um, but I think it's with us too, but I said I would mention it. So you have an email in his inbox specifically uh, with two questions. One was, uh, following up to his um, asking the board to research, research the designation of secondary schools and the possibility of that. Um, and then also um, the idea of closing the Stockbridge campus. And so I, want, I shared that all with you. I did share with Keith in regards to the designation of schools that that also had come up at two other districts within the supervisory union during their annual meetings. And we did research um, for First Branch Unified District and at Stratford School District, what the savings would have been potentially if you were to designate three up to three, because in, in statute you can designate up to three schools. And so when we were to take the top three schools that their students are attending, and looked at designating them and then taking the other students that were left that were going to other schools, which could both be public and independent and sometimes out of state. What we found was um, that there was there was really no savings. Um, and we went as far as to even look at in first branch, if you were to designate all your students to just one high school, which would have been White River Valley High School for them, um, the savings was still uh, about 120,000 for that district. Um, and so if that is an exercise that the board wants us to go through here, just know that we're more than capable to be able to navigate um, How did that process. And that's something you can consider on your future agenda items. Well, I, I feel like we've already had the, the conversation a few times and we, I think the, the biggest, the ultimate decision for I think most of us is that the, the fact that parents work in so many different directions. So it's like we can't, we definitely can't designate one school. I don't think that's feasible, um, depending on which direction parents are driving, et cetera. But then if you're saying if it's not any cost savings for three schools, then what's the. We haven't found that. I'm saying I could run your real numbers. Yeah. So you could just see it. That's yeah. If you want us to do, yeah. I just need the board to ask the administration to do that and we can present at a future. Okay. Jamie? Jamie? Is that Keith? It's Keith, yes, it is. I'm, uh, Jamie. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Jamie. You was just presenting your uh, public comment to us. Uh, yes, I, I did hear that, um, and uh, I'd like to see the numbers that Jamie is using uh, because, you know, it, it seems like with the our district is trying to make sure that our students get the best education possible, and part of that is making some difficult decisions, and to me, an easy decision is to designate high schools. And Jamie made the statement that if we designate three high schools, um, it doesn't save much money. However, I'm not sure what the analysis is in terms of which three high schools we would designate. So, um, so Keith, what, uh, what Jamie has said is that for past districts, they've taken the top three schools that their children currently attend and used those to as the baseline to um, to come up with the calculation for how much cost savings it would be to designate three schools. And he, they have found that there really was not much or any savings. This is okay. not in our district. I, this has happened in other districts that they've looked at. I hear that. However, I'd like to see the top three school districts that our upper grades are attending in our district, not what other districts are doing. 
That is correct. And um, what Jamie is saying is if the board sh should direct him to do so, uh, he can do that for our district if we would like. And why wouldn't the board want to do that to see what the actual numbers are? Because well, we, uh, we might like school choice. <laughs> Well, that's, but you know what? That's, that's really a horrible answer to my question. That's like, let's avoid the tough decisions and just remain on the status quo. I, you, do you feel that's an acceptable answer to someone who lives in the Stockbridge community? Thank you, Keith, for your, um, bringing this to the board for us to discuss and to Amy, make if this I is something to, that we want to do as a board. So thank you for bringing this to Amy, us. Amy, I have to it. tell you, I am very disappointed in constantly being dismissed because I'm not in line with what the board wants. We were okay, and I want to be on record. I want to be on record for that comment to you. Okay? Thank you very much. I will thank mute you. at this point. We were just about to discuss the possibility of if we wanted to uh, direct the administration to look into the cost savings for if our schools chose to designate. I do know that when we uh, initially um, merged, it was uh, having choice was something that both our towns highly valued. Um, now that being said, Having an exercise to look at the numbers may not hurt. I, I mean, I don't want to cause undue stress onto our taxpayers, but um, maybe, maybe it wouldn't hurt to just see what the numbers would be. Well, I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, Jamie shared with us a lengthy letter from the, the governor of the state of Vermont about schools uh, facing um, huge and community huge. Uh, financial impact of, of having quality education and how to figure out a way to do it for less and all that and all that and all that. Together, and certainly our administration, but all the boards in the MSU are going to be having to work very long and over time to figure out where it's headed and what does it mean for our SU and what must we do. I think this is something we put on a potential, but I'm certainly not going to vote to, to pull our, our uh, administration, administrative team off uh, what they're doing to get ready, because this is this is another going to be hair on fire year, it seems like. And uh, and I'm not convinced at all that uh, this um, is worth it. The other thing, and it's real, because um, I did the survey overwhelmingly, Stockbridge values school choice. And so I hear Keith, and Keith is very interested in what the savings may be. We've got initial findings in other districts that are not, doesn't convince me we should be stopping what we're doing and, and figure out it was with us when we have an overwhelming support for school choice. So I think this is something we keep on our radar screen, and when we find out further where the state's going and where might, we might have to look, then we can pull it back um, as we so choose, but I'm not in favor of it right now. Okay. What's that? Sharon's point two? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, do, did you already say it? The second part of this. Okay. Was the closure. Was the, oh, okay. Um, so the second uh, portion of Keith's um, uh, public comment uh, is discussion around the closure of the Stockbridge campus. Um, and to um, now I know that um, we've had overwhelming support from the uh, Stockbridge community specifically that, uh, to keep the Stockbridge campus open. And so uh, that is what the board um, at this point is directed to do. Um, I do feel that um, if there is a large number of Stockbridge community members who have a different feeling than that, then I definitely would like to hear from them. I want their voice heard. Um, but it was overwhelming that Stockbridge residents uh, valued and wanted to keep their school building open. Um, so I guess at this point, I don't feel that our board should take this, explore this option 
um, unless we find there's more oh, well, there's overwhelming evidence that there's voters who um, would really like us to look into closing the Stockbridge campus. Is any further comment on that? Yes, Robert. Yes, the logistics involved in closing that campus and absorbing that, absorbing the kids here is not trivial and can be. Amy? Yes, Keith. I have a Go question ahead. for you. Okay. Okay. So, so you said you have, I'm not sure I heard correctly, and I'm paraphrasing, but there's overwhelming support in the Stockbridge community to maintain the Stockbridge campus. Am I correct? Uh, yes, that is what, what we have found. Yes. Okay. And overwhelming means what percentage of the Stockbridge community is overwhelming? Um, I believe, Keith, the question you're trying to get to is how many people uh, would I like to hear from to have the board take up possibly looking no, into well, this option? Um, and I would well, say... Yes, that's ahead. part of my question. But my first question is, you made a statement that said the overwhelming uh, community in Stockbridge wants to maintain the Stockbridge campus. So obviously you have numbers that back that statement up. What is the overwhelming uh, percentage? Yeah, Keith, um, this is Bill Edgerton. Uh, how far with the data collection effort uh, some, some time ago, and we do have numbers. Uh, I don't have them on hand, and I'm not going to pretend to remember uh, so either overemphasize or underemphasize the vote, but I'm more than happy to share that with you um, whenever Great. Uh, it's uh, Amy uh, is so at that. But yeah, we do have numbers and they're uh, significant. Great. Thank you. Okay, that's good. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, for bringing those. Well, uh, no, no, no. And then the follow up is how many people within the community of Stockbridge? Do I need to provide to the board that says you need to do a study to see if there is an advantage to closing and consolidating this, uh, the Stockbridge campus with Rochester? Um, now, I feel that um, the, like other um, petitions, 5% uh, of the registered voters I would feel that would be an appropriate amount for the board to um, okay. see, see that there is um, is desire in that community to explore that option. Okay, so 5% of the Stockbridge voters. That's what right. I would need to and present to the board. Yeah, the board, again, the board as of now has, has um, is supporting the opinion to keep the Stockbridge campus open due to the want and desire of the registered voters. If there's registered voters that are have a different opinions of that, I would like to see a 5% um, so that we know that there is a, a, a change of opinion or um, a desire in that community to look at closing the Stockbridge campus. Thank you. And, and, and I'm not looking to say I'm not looking to say that they should close the Stockbridge School campus. I'm saying I'd like to see the board conduct a study to see what the advantage would be if we were to close that. So I'm not looking to, you know, have the community vote on closing of the school. I'm looking for the community to say to the board, let's have a study done to see what the benefit would be to the taxpayers and what impact it would have on the students within that school. That's all I'm looking to, for. Thank you. Casey? Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on what you said, Amy, with regards to uh, looking for a percentage of the population who, who would want this type of study, because we have put forth a lot of effort in our surveys and analyzing our data and having retreats to, to further analyze our data and move forward from it. 
I think it's just, you know, we're kind of beating a dead horse if we're if we're continuously revisiting the same topic. I mean, there will come a time when we will want to do another survey, but we spent a lot of time on surveys. Yes. Um, and so I guess I, I want to um, get a consensus from the board when that I said 5%, that was just a, a number I was um, thinking seemed reasonable, but I would that would like to make sure the rest of my board members are in agreement or if not um, on that. I'm not sure if there's any, is there any other statutory provision that would uh, speak to that or otherwise it sounds fine to me, but I'm not familiar with whether we need more or less. No, I don't believe there is. It's a, I think, I think it's going to take a lot of time. I think that's time that's fine, but that's basically just 5% would catch my attention that we should uh, we should look into it more right. exactly. and, and devote some of the school resources toward, towards them. Yeah. But that's um, right. it's just, you know, we, we have to have a significant number of people to, to, well, that's to my, yeah, 100 or 200, then it's like, okay, yeah, we need to do something about it. I know, 60 people, you're going to get that every time you do it. <laughs> you know, and it's just going to keep us from doing our job. Right. <clears throat> that's, you know, that's where I, it's like, okay, I, I think it should be something somewhat significant. I'm not saying 50%, but maybe it should be 10%, 15%. You know, okay, but to me, what, what is the registered voters? Is like 500 or something? 600 or something? I think it's 50. 660 or something. Yeah. Okay, but, but you but, but you have a basis of a significant number of people who want to keep the Stockbridge uh, campus open, correct? That's, That's what you just said. That's correct. Okay, That's so so you have a basis. So what is that number? Uh, again, Bill said that um, he can provide that number. Um, not tonight, uh, but we did. We did surveys. We've done the the um, from past discussion of when um, the. Uh, the we'll have to go back and check that out. I think maybe that makes sense first before we decide on the criteria. Okay. 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 So I agree with that. Six hundred voters, and you have you know three hundred people who say keeping the Stockbridge campus open is what we should do, I get that. But if you have 50 people who say you should keep that campus open, I have a question. Yes, I, I, I agree. Yeah. So uh, Bill's going to come back. I think it's premature, Keith. I would not be in favor of looking at Stockbridge alone. If we're looking at Stockbridge, why are we looking at Stockbridge alone? We should be looking at Rochester. That's double the, the the work output. I think it's premature because the state is in this turmoil of where they're going to go and what we need to do and what price signals they're going to be sending us one way or the other. That might swing it to one school or the other school, but I don't want to be spinning wheels here. Uh, I don't want you. I don't want to spin wheels either. I'm I saying call, we're one but, district. All I'm saying is I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, Stockbridge versus Rochester. I'm saying what do we oh, yes, need to do to make the Rochester Stockbridge School District stronger? Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. not one against the other. Point of order, I think we're at, at the end of the public communication yes. comment. Yeah. Thank you, Keith, but we are indeed at the end of public comment. Uh, no, well, we have another opportunity. At the end. Okay. At the end of the I would be interested to see the board's follow-up, though. Thank you. Okay, uh, board comment. Okay, no board comment. Um, why don't we skip over the superintendent's report as he's um, in jihad meeting and let's go to the principal's report. Yep, so you have my report in front of you. We are off and running. Kids are back in school, which is exciting. Um, a couple of things that I think are probably some changes, some updates. Our numbers have grown. Yeah. So um, we do have 47 preschool through sixth grade students back to Stockbridge 
this fall in 86 preschool through sixth grade students back to Rochester. So that's a couple more kiddos in Rochester and that's 10 more in Stockbridge this year. Um, so that's some new families. We have large three-year-old preschool groups on both campuses, which is exciting. Um, and so we wanted to highlight that. We're a um, couple of things going on. This past weekend at the Harvest Fair, we did have a combined PTO booth where kids got to paint a tablecloth. Sorry for anybody who went home with a lot of paint. And <laughs> I don't think I've gotten mine out yet, but that's, that's okay. Um, and it just was a good opportunity for kids to get together, parents to get together. Um, and both PTOs are kind of up and running and are already talking about events for this fall and winter. Um, the other thing is, speaking of kind of outdoor classroom, our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders in both campuses will go snorkeling right around the corner at the White River Valley uh, next next week and then this week they get to do the um agriculture education part of the fair on oh, Thursday. Right, okay. uh, sorry the tunbridge fair i say the fair been over here too One long <laughs> the fair. when i first started working over this way i was like what's the fair it's the world's fair i i learned quickly <laughs> um, but overall we've had a great start and uh yeah we're up and running i'll take any questions uh, it's kind of the highlight. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in your report. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, is there any uh, questions or comments for Linda? Yes, Bill. Yeah, um, really excited about the increase in enrollment. Uh, we have a, a brand new uh, strategic communication plan that we've seen um, that for the whole SU. And mm -hmm. A priority, I think, six or goal six has to do with recruiting, retrain, retaining, and building social capital so that we have a student population that um, that we can spread out the costs over and be more cost effective. Whether it's students in our classrooms or, or that sort of thing, or tuition income, and they, the students come from elsewhere. So this is a real example of this district taking action and doing good good work on that communication uh, objective. Uh, and then the second thing, it sounds like this opening of school, I mean, I just get excited walking in and just seeing the kids dying to be back. That's my impression. I remember my son. <laughs> Gosh. So, I mean, that sounds, that sounds, uh, that sounds exciting. Very pleased. Oh, uh, I know it's very preliminary right now. You're, you're busy opening the school and such, but uh, not to. Uh, we've had some preliminary discussion about um, possible use of the high, of the mm -hmm. high school building or to expand curriculum if, if it is acquired and such. So. I just want to keep that on your radar. I we did send something out email. this afternoon yes. um, after having some conversations in some of our in services about what could things look like in the future. So I sent something out um, around the idea of four days in a year in the auditorium. So planning for two concerts, but two other, mm -hmm. yeah. who knows what they could be. They could be a lot of things. Lots of um, great opportunity for expanding. Yeah. Uh, expanding our instrumental lessons to use that space instead of art. some of the spaces, spaces we use. Uh, some time for art over there and then some maker space time, not the big ones. Mm -hmm. that came through. That's great. Uh, yeah. I'm glad to, yeah. people are uh, thinking of, of how, ways to expand. Well, the expand question was, program. can we go over right now? And I'm like, well, there's not really <laughs> anything in the maker space. <laughs> no, I don't know what physical classroom they're talking about. But okay. There's, there's, so just, they're excited. Just a lot of shells. Yeah. Brought, brought that up. Um, I'm very pleased that you provided that information. So the repurposing effort that's aimed towards yeah. election day, November 5th. Yes. Um, people can uh, be fully informed of the positive features, um, the cost benefits right. of repurposing the high school rather than spending over a million dollars plus to tear it down with no benefit. Right. And, just demonstrate that the school, we, we really could utilize that space for the benefits of our students going forward. And certainly music and the arts are huge. Um, so 
I'm pleased you're doing that. And then I, I heard uh, that the PTO is part of that effort to get the word out. And I think yep, we need to get the that. word out. Um, I'm pleased that it's going to be this, you know, the, the November vote we should turn it up, but we need, we have an obligation. One of our key goals is to support the repurposing effort for the high school so that we have those resources in the future, um, as well as, and this is Stockbridge speaking, as well as Rochester and, and the surrounding community. So I'm pleased about that. And Lindy, thank you for, for putting that information out. Because I'm sure people ask, what, what does the school need? And right. You've, you've done and, that in your, your email. And thank we you. did um, share out this using some of our social media. It didn't work as nice as this. I kind of figured it out. <laughs> I didn't know, it was testing my tech skills. Um, right. How to make it show up on social media as nicely as this. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a nicer version. But that got you, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Excellent. Um, is there any other uh, questions or comments for the principal? Okay. Um, I just skipped with the business manager's report as she is not here. Um, can anybody speak on the policy committee? That we're going to leave to Jamie as well. Yeah, there's enough okay. in here for the policy committee. Okay. <laughs> um, great. Well, then, uh, can we move on to 8.1 discussion? Um, or is that Jamie as well? No, we can do that. Okay. Um, so 8.1 facility update and possible action on window replacement through capital improvement grant. Take it away. So we've been working with EEI. They came through and gave us a proposal um, of what it would be to replace the classroom windows here for K through six. Preschool wasn't on that. Um, as well as the classroom windows in Stockbridge. Um, and one was a little over a hundred thousand, and one was right around sixty thousand. Yeah. Does that sound right? For all yeah. the windows? Um, well, some of them would be framed in using this. I don't know what it was called. Some sort of tool. So the ones that are already framed in with plywood right now, and yeah. yeah. they would be framed in in a much more permanent. Fixture. They would pull the plywood yeah. where they just put plywood over the opening essentially and frame it in. And Is that it just a the top of the gym here? That's one the example, yeah. but if you look at the front of the building, there's yeah. some windows there's that some like there. There oh, clearly yeah. was another pane at one point in time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they framed that in. Okay, that's not a bad, that's not a bad place uh, at all. So we did push back. Okay. And now we're not ready <laughs> yeah. to quite make a recommendation yet. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, we, we definitely think it's, it's, we should do it. Yeah. Um, like over here, single pane windows, it's like having a hole in the wall. Um, so there'll definitely be a huge cost savings in energy for sure. Um, but we would, we would like to get a second quote mm -hmm. outside of EEI, even though we know, like Tom and Jamie, we have an understanding that. So this is just an estimate from EEI, just like when we did the lighting, um, the, the lighting electrical HVAC heating, they gave us a proposal, then they sharpened their pencil, went to multiple um, companies to get firm quotes, and then you kind of pick and choose from it. Um, so that's kind of the same same uh, concept. They're acting as a GC and, and helping guide us, through, guide us through the project. Um, so there's some benefit to that. Uh, but I think, and Jamie and Lindy and I were talking, it's like, okay, I don't think it hurts to get a second opinion from another party um, okay. because, Absolutely. you know, are we, you know, could we potentially save 40,000, 50,000, or okay. are we in range to use their service? Yeah. Um, and we're that, not really in a hurry. So. Right. And the other piece <clears throat> of it is that that quote did not include the gym windows here. Yeah. And it didn't include the multi-purpose room windows or looking at those pictures. So they came by today to um, like take some measurements, actually come inside the building, because this was all based on an exterior walkabout and not oh, like right. an inside one. Mm -hmm. And we also directed them to add those to that and then give us a priority list. Mm -hmm. right? so, so we can it didn't, it didn't include it did not include the gym windows, which are really just um, plywood. Okay. From what I can tell. Um and it did not include the multi-purpose room windows. And there was a question about whether those really needed to be replaced or the fixtures just needed to be re replaced to make them usable. Um, so they came back today to look through that. Um, and 
add on to it. And then we asked for like a priority list. So you guys gave permission for $200,000 to be spent out of the capital improvement fund, and we've spent about 30. Mm -hmm. So we we're looking to see what could we do for 170 left window update wise. And then, so we anticipate by our retreat, we'll be able to present something to actually mm -hmm. move forward with okay. some sort of plan. Great. Well, it's nice that we are able to proactively look at a Grading our facilities and not reactively. Yeah. Um, and a little add on to that solar is scheduled to be installed on the roof of the school in Stockbridge in October. Um, so that'll be huge, especially if we're moving into getting a, an electric bus. Yeah. I think the more we can do, the better. Um, what a good um, timing. Yeah. And so, along with that, I've been doing a lot of digging with the existing <laughs> solar array. Um, it's been <laughs> interesting. Um, so a little background from what I've gathered, it was a company that, that did a bunch of installs at a, a bunch of different schools around the state of Vermont. Um, Are you talking about our little one that's yeah, out there that's yeah, already there? Okay, yes. yeah, just wanted to clarify which and one so about. it sounds like they kind of con the state and use a bunch of grant money. Mm -hmm. uh, they oversold these systems. Like, for instance, it has a very large backup battery system under it that's just not really doing anything, um, but it's also not worth implementing at this point um, because we, I wanted to look at that as an option to have backup power at the, uh, um, at the concession mm -hmm. building uh, where the power goes out with community meals there, and et cetera, to make sure that that's still running. Um, and in all this, we discovered that we're not getting a credit from the solar. Oh. So, which is, it's a simple fix. We just need to install a production meter. So we're in the middle of getting that implemented, which hopefully will kind of be in line with getting the solar in on the roof. Um, and I would like the board to consider, um, we can lease the Powerwall battery from, from GMP. It's two batteries for $55 a month. Um, they could go in that building and uh, essentially uh, GMP uses power from it in peak hours and then on, we have ba uh, we have battery storage when the power goes out um, as opposed to you know no it, it, you can just outright lease them that's not yeah. a program that it's you a have program to apply through them it, that it, has no. a long waiting list no it's just a lease program through them Really I spoke with them on the phone and, and they sent me all the information. Okay, because, um, uh, yeah, information I thought was that it was only available to a certain number of people. They saw everybody signed they've, up for they've, they've expanded. So it's, yeah. and, and I have it on it's that, that same thing on both my yeah. home and my office building. Yeah. So I think it'd be worth, worth it. But the, the thing is, it's a 10 year lease, which I think is okay. Um, but maybe. I think what would be worthwhile is is when we redo the parking lot, maybe bringing conduit over from the school, empowering that building from the school and, and eliminating the meter at that building, um, so we don't have an extra meter charge each separate. month. Right. And yeah. and then on top of that, then we could just have that tied into the school generator and have it all in one system. Maybe it, I don't, I'm not saying we should, but maybe it's That's worth. That's one looking at it or at least bringing a conduit across the parking lot when we right so there's it, it's when there. you go to do it yeah. it's there yeah. yeah um and currently um it is used as from for the stockbridge community meals it's not actually used for anything for the school not sure it is used as an intervention space during the school day oh okay mm -hmm. right so We've it's a bonus it's, it's a bonus. Space. It's a bonus room. Well, we had to fix it up during COVID to have a isolation space. This was part of the return to school policy way. Right. Seems like a lifetime ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, so we had to, that was the only space with the proper ventilation to meet the requirements mm -hmm. for something like that. So we've continued to use it a couple days a week. Um, because there's sometimes that we have all the interventionists like speech, OT, uh, math, literacy, school nurse. We have everybody. Yeah. They're all at once. 
Um, so we do utilize it for three days a week. Okay. And so we not for the whole day, but forever, but. So we do currently have a generator on the Stockbridge School. Correct. So if we brought a conduit across the parking lot, then we would the, yeah. that building would be powered during a power outage by the generator. Correct. Instead of the um, yeah. batteries that yeah. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But the question would be, you know, are we planning to do that in the next three years? You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, okay, so does it make sense to say go in the power wall direction for 10 years? Then you move over. I, I don't know. You know, I think it's something for all of us to think about. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing that to us and yes. think about it. Absolutely. Um, I think that was it. Yeah. I think so. Oh, and uh, cutting trees down around the yeah. existing array. Yeah. yeah. I cut some down. We need yeah. to find somebody to do some of the bigger ones. But, okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you for all your work on that. That's great. Anybody have any further questions? Um, Just thank you for doing that. Yeah. Oh, I love doing it. <laughs> <laughs> when you have time. Like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. So just as a note for the cost of the lease for five years would be. It's a 10 year lease. I'm sorry. It's, um, well, you can do. $7,200. Well, you can do a one time payment of 5500 if you want. Oh, okay. Right. So you have to. to Look at that versus yeah trenching and all that stuff. It may not yeah. may not yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if we're already doing some uh, tearing up the, the parking lot, that's a good idea to put that across. But Just to have anyway. But in oh, the it short, would be big money to to yeah to tie it. Right. It would. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it may be the, the best option. Best option. Yeah. Okay. And I mean. Possibly, we um, the town, um, uh, the food community, uh, whatever they are, would be able to maybe provide a small amount. Of yeah, yeah. Towards the yeah. Of it. yeah. Okay, great. Well, we'll think about that and um, bring that back up again. Okay, uh, 8.2 planning for our board retreat. Which is on the mm -hmm. yep September twenty eighth. Um. So um, so far we have um, I have um ideas for expanding programming. Um, I was wondering about our scorecard, Bill. If it was, um. If we did, when did we um, fill out our board scorecard? Was it uh, um, was six they, months ago or was it, it a year ago? Um, it's on an annual basis. So I'd send them out before the retreat and um, and then score them and we'd share that information. Um, we're really talking about two things. One is to self evaluate our governance principles, how closely we, we follow our principles, what we're all about, and also the protocols so how we our process, how we treat each other and respect uh, and advance the, the, the mission. And we've done that now two years. This will be our third year. And with the OK, uh, uh, and I could implement that. We also, uh, each year now, we have specific goals. And looking back, we looked at the protocols. We need to look back and how well we did with each goal. Like I mentioned, the one having to do with supporting the repurposing effort. And so I think that's very relevant. And we score ourselves and how do we do A, B, C, D, whatever. And uh, and then just start the process of thinking forward. Now we're into our first academic month for FY25. And we need to be putting together um, suitable goals uh, that are important, achievable, and measurable that we can uh, guide the administration for for the next year. And uh, again, uh, we normally don't. We start the process at the retreat, yeah. um, talking about it. And then I think you've delegated some people to come up with draft goals. And then that group or whatever it is, uh, individuals come back to the committee and or the board. Yeah. And we do that in a further session. 
Yeah, in, and our, um, in our last uh, meeting, we yeah. did the mission, our mission statement. So yeah. that was a. Uh, and then finally, um, we've done two years with uh, book review, and we looked at chapters of books. Um, um, I think two years, and I there's I think you suggested possible other ways that we can develop our knowledge and expertise about what we do and how do we do it better. And so some options are go out find another book and 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 do chapter by chapter. Another thing is. Um, uh, everybody uh, uh, suggesting articles um, that we're aware of that we think would advance our knowledge or understanding. And each month we could read an article, four or five or pages. That's another option. And the third one is um, we could look like we've got um, dozens and dozens of policies uh, mm -hmm. that we pick out policies that we think might be coming our way sooner than we think and spend time each month looking at a policy or two. You know, not what questions um, do we understand it? Do we need recommend to the SU board whether it needs to be changed or something like that? So there's some options there, it seems to me, we could toy with at the retreat and Sounds great. get some guidance. Yeah, I think that would be a good discussion. Yeah. Okay. And um, I know uh, also we are going to put on a discussion on around reconfiguration. All right. Um, Where's it going to be? It's which question? I'm inside of that. We were here in January. I'm going to do it at Stockbridge. So do it at Stockbridge. Maybe make the call. <laughs> do the fire and ice. Closer. <laughs> <laughs> we did a retreat way back when it was first on the board. I take the 15. We did at fire nights. We had a big one. Great salad. They still have the salad. No, no, they don't have the salad. It's not worth it anymore. It's not the salad. Um, I mean, just as a note, it is it is a warned meeting, which is open to the public. Yeah. And not necessarily, and, and by, and we have to provide some uh, ability for the public to express an opinion, but they would not participate in the retreat. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. um, well, I mean, tea keeping in our tradition of just going back and forth between the towns, I have no problem um, doing it in Stockbridge, as long as we can have real size tables and chairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Adult size, not real. Let me change. Totally take that back. Adult like size. There. Well, we can be in a multi-purpose room like yes. we were in August. Yeah. Okay. For folks, there's more yes. space that way. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Uh, well, so if everybody doesn't mind, we will uh, loop back to the superintendent's report. Uh, so you have my report in hand. Um, Thank you. Uh, just so you know, Bill's representing our set at December Fair. Thank you, Bill. Really appreciated. Um, I wanted to also just uh, remind everyone I shared out uh, again today uh, just an update on the uh, Commission on the Future of Public Education. They met today. They're meeting on the first Monday of the month now. Um, I've shared the link to their website a few different times. Um, I expect to be able to kind of provide an overview um, in regards to, I, have, I anyways, I have a superintendent's meeting on Friday, so I'll be able to provide an overview at the first of the next week when we get updated from the trustees on kind of the sense of uh, the direction of that group. And then also I shared with you all a letter which Bill referenced earlier from Governor Scott in regards to Ed spending um, across the state. So. Um, which I know one SU board member has already written back to him. So, um, you know, in general, I would say, um, you know, my sense is is that there is we're going to need to have a uh, full front um, um, attack in regards to making certain we're communicating with our constituents where our budget process is at and what we're doing because I still think there's going to be a lot of um, generalizations made in regards to how much you know community taxes are going up and 
community taxes are are not it average is one thing in a state but it can be very greatly based on each district um so i think we're just going to need to continue to try to work really hard to get that information out to our constituents i just also wanted to highlight two um one the custodial crew and maintenance crew work incredibly hard in both your buildings this summer mm -hmm. i think you already mentioned that probably under your discussion around facilities i just i wanted to put a shout out i hope you see can notice the difference i certainly notice the difference when i'm in your buildings in regards to the, the work they've been doing so yeah it looks great uh, and they're proud of it mm -hmm. yeah that's good uh, it should be so that's uh something i wanted to just mention uh, in addition to the report um, and then also um, just uh, thanking Principal Stetson and the PTOs for having your presence um, in Rochester on the green uh, yes. last weekend. Um, that's our efforts to just get out and be uh, more forward facing in regards to our communities. Um, and then uh, just know that we are going to be um, really kicking off a lot of different promotional aspects across the supervisory union uh, starting this coming week at the fair in regards to just promoting all the different offerings we have within our districts but also some of the things that i still think people don't know for example that you know we do offer now as a partner school with vtblc we are able to offer um, a pathway that's fully virtual to allow students and other um, districts that are not operating to have a student essentially they could go through vtblc as part of the wrvsu schools both in our sub and in white river unified district k through 12 now if if they chose uh and receive a diploma from our high school wow, um that's great and so that's something that we started and you may say well how many you know students are actually doing that you know between elementary middle and high school now we're up to over 16 students uh, wow. that are now within our supervisory union from um, sending districts that have choice across the state um, that are a part of our school district now, but attending via VTVLC. And with every one of those students uh, comes a revenue stream around your announced tuition dollars for our son through grade six and seven through 12 at the White River Unified District. So I wanted to mention that, and we've got a bunch of promotional uh, materials that we just put together in partnership with BTVLC to try to better try to communicate that to our families. I think this will be an ongoing um, a benefit of both institutions. Yeah, I mean, um, we piloted it. So this has been a long standing partnership with VTVLC in, um, frankly, the Richford District for a number of years. Um, up on the border, what they recognized was this idea of like, why do we not have at least another district more central to the state that could receive oh, students? Great. And the idea is, is that, you know, ideally, we want to foster this idea that those students are our students. And so we are consistently checking and progress monitoring them, but also opening up other opportunities in the event that they want to participate in extracurriculars or specific opportunities within our buildings. Um, and, and we did have students walk last year at high school. I mean, they, they are, they are, they That's are great. White River um, Unified District students. So, um, yeah, I see it, Bill, hopefully being a longstanding partnership wow. with BTBLC. Do we have a lot of uh, teachers? from our district working for BT VLC? We have one from the high school. Just one? Yeah. Yeah, I did that for years. Yeah. You know, the way this partnership works is those teachers are full-time. It's not like yeah. um, where our teacher teaches part-time uh, for other high school students who then get seats that they can pursue. Mm -hmm. The way the full-time VTBLC works is they hire teachers, but that's all they do. Yeah. Um, and they have their own principals okay. and everything that partner with that's us. Different than it, well, yeah, that what you're it's talking about program. is also still mm -hmm. available, but they're mm -hmm. they're different, they're separate mm -hmm. kind of pathways within VTBLC. Mm -hmm. Full virtual education. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Is there any questions for Jamie around his um Superintendent's report. Okay. Um, I don't see Tara on our business manager, so we will 
uh, unless somebody else can report? Yeah, no, I mean, I you, you have a report in hand. I mean, um, audit is what we're really focused on in regards to our site audit. Um, I know that we're in good shape in regards to um, being on track to have our audits all completed uh, by the first of the year. And I know that the auditors have that survey um, that they request the board members to do um, that you did last year. Mm -hmm. um, so Tara will be getting that out to you. I just heard you mention that to Rainbow Hancock. Um, and then we're kicking off our student support budget process with principals. Uh, and so you'll see draft one of those uh, next month. Crazy Terry. There you go again. Just a brief break. <laughs> right back into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, does anyone, is there any questions in regards to the business manager's report? Okay. Very none. We're going to move on to <coughs> discussion item 8.3 Suckbridge Bridge Project. Uh, and look to Bill or Jamie to. Yeah, um, so I can kick off, Bill, I'm going to hand it over to you. Does that work? Um, and so um, Bill mentioned this last month, and we said we would get it on the agenda for this month. So the town of Stockbridge is going to be replacing a bridge um, in Gaysville. Um, and, and so Bill um, had raised a concern last month in regards to there's not a plan right now to uh, put a sidewalk uh, on that bridge. And the bridge is essentially fully grant funded through federal funds um, and is being supported through VTRANS. Um, and so Bill raised the concern that uh, around safety for our students uh, crossing the bridge. I've checked in with Principal Stetson. In general, we have three, three students, um, is my understanding, that, that utilize the bus service there currently right now. I know that's a question some folks have had for me on a regular basis um, with the bridge. I did reach out to uh, the select board chair from Stockbridge uh, to get a sense from Michael um, why the select board had decided not to pursue a sidewalk. Um, because I think at one point there was some talks around the sidewalk and Bill can lead you through this timeline some more here in a minute um, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think I do believe at one point there was discussions around the sidewalk uh, for the bridge. Once talking to the engineer and the engineer raised concern that some communities uh, struggle to maintain sidewalks on bridge and there was concern around what that cost would be because the town of Stockbridge, my understanding is they had just two road crew guys and so they felt like that they weren't going to be able to take that additional task on. And so cost was certainly a concern for them and upkeep into the future is what Michael raised for me. Um, and I said to him, I appreciated him giving me the, that uh, insight and that I would certainly share that um, with the board tonight. He, you know, he raised a concern to me about why this was a Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board agenda item. He felt like this was a town issue, not a school district issue. And I said, well, we do have students that would go across the bridge and so that had been raised as a safety concern and hence why the board would be discussing it tonight. Um, we certainly, you know, I share with him, we fully understand that, you know, the separation in regards to the municipality and the school district. And I said, I've always appreciated the support that the Stockbridge Select Board has certainly provided us. And frankly, did provide us a great deal of support um, throughout the decoupling vote when we navigated that several years ago. Um, and so I, I shared with him that really, I wanted to reach out to let him know one, so they weren't surprised that it was on our agenda. Um, and two, to let them know there could be a possible resolution forthcoming from the board. And then three, I wanted to get the background from his perspective so I could just provide that to the board in the event that he couldn't come tonight. Great. Thank you. I have a simple solution. What? I have a simple solution. Go ahead. Well, you were, you were talking about having a sidewalk and, and taking the lines away from each side. It's like, well, why don't we just move the traffic to one side and it's as simple as repainting lines mm -hmm. and not have it a separate sidewalk from the bridge, just have designated walking area on the bridge. Um, <clears throat> did you note uh, that there was indeed a two foot section on each side of 
Uh, yep, um, sorry, yep. So there is a two foot section, although Bill, you had mentioned two feet on each side. Mike Cole's recollection was that there's only a two foot section. My uh, recollection and discussion with uh, two V trans is, and uh, an email from the town clerk is that uh, what the select board approved and V trans is doing the preliminary designs is a 24 foot wide bridge, two 10 foot lanes, that gives you 20 feet, and then two shoulders, two feet each, one on either side. Um, that's where we're going from. Well, I heard Patrick write, which is um, combine the two shoulders have, into one. Or have one. And, uh, and put a line down and you might say sidewalk, sidewalk, or paint yeah. them, all that sort of thing. So I think that's um, useful to discuss. And um, I'm more than happy to, to do that based on my research and, and knowledge. Do you, I think in some ways we need to go back before we talk about specific solutions, if we can. Okay. And um, the short answer to you, Patrick, is um, I think federal standards for safe streets and state standards, if you're going to have a sidewalk and no um, barrier or no like tree lawn, that has got to be elevated. And the standard is, as far as I know from the, um, the manuals, is a six foot curb. And then you have the sidewalk there. And the reason for that is that if you're walking, you need to be not worried about being hit by a car. And the curb, everybody's used to driving down and seeing that curb and doesn't want to uh, do damage to their tire or their rim by hitting the curb. So they have a problem if you're going to have a safe passage that you need to make it safe. And that goes history here. There's two state acts that are very germane here. The first act is eight, uh, Act uh, 34. And that's the legislation that was passed, I think, in the early 20s, uh, 2020s, uh, 2008 or 2010, that basically mandated through VTRANS to have uh, utilized complete streets strategies. And the street complete street strategy says that all travelers have a right of safe, safe passage. That means trucks, cars, vehicles. That means bicycles. And that means pedestrians, whether they need help or not. Now, you don't necessarily utilize all those if you're in the, where there's no pedestrians. And so you'll see a number of uh, bridges that basically have the two lanes and a shoulder, but no sidewalk because there's very few people walking over the bridge to get any place. Um, that's different than Gaysville, but I'll get to that in a second. So that's what the state VTRAN is supposed to follow. Then there's another act called Act 19, which is basically, I call it local control. And I like local control, most of us do, which says the last shot on this is the select board. So you have a select board that doesn't believe in a sidewalk, even though the state is mandated to have safe passage, including a sidewalk, but VTRANS does not have uh, the ability to override, and I don't think it's ever been contested in court, which of these uh, carries the day, um, because both agent agencies and local controls are very, very important. That's where I was, I was looking at the state guidelines and I'm going, of course we're gonna have a sidewalk. And some other people say, yes, they, they did it. I finally contacted them and, and uh, the town clerk said, no, it's gonna be 24 feet, no sidewalk. So that got me going about, is that our safest solution given that the feds are paying 100% of the, of the capital costs? And then let's look at the maintenance costs. Um, and also, what do the people think? Uh, the select board, and part of it is they didn't have a public hearing. And as far as I know, I can't find any vote, but I, Michael, is, they're, they're unanimous on uh, what they're favoring with 24 feet, two lanes, no, no sidewalk. So I did two things, personally, professionally, and beyond the school committee, I think we have an obligation to uh, try to have our kids have safe passage, whether it's three, five, uh, or whatever. And the other thing, keep thinking about, the decision that's going to be made by the end of this month, because then they're going to lock in the design, 
It's not like that sidewalk down here or no sidewalk. Next week, next year, we can add a sidewalk. A bridge, it's now or never, and the bridge design is 100 years. So the decision gets made to have a sidewalk or no sidewalk is good for 100 years. That's way beyond my lifetime, your lifetime, and our kids' lifetime. So it's very important. So I did go and knocked on some doors and to find out, uh, there's a petition of uh, what the people in Gaysville primarily, but um, beyond that, think about having a sidewalk, whether they wanted a sidewalk or not. Uh, I've got basically 100 signatures um, and 100 signatures supporting a sidewalk, wanting a sidewalk, feeling it's safer to have a sidewalk for um, not only the kids, but the people that walk to the post office across the bridge from Gaysville. We have a swimming hole that's popular. Patrick can tell you all the time she flipped off that cliff to go into the White River. We have a beach now on both sides of the White River. They cross over, whatever the case is. We've got a new the campground we're turning into the White River Park. Um, and we've got canoe and kayak racing, and they one of the races I know stops right at the bridge. So spectators are looking over the kayak race right now. It's not safe and it won't be safe. So I'm saying, let's look at, can we figure out what's the proper thing to do for our kids? So I went and knocked on doors, a hundred signatures um, in favor of a sidewalk. And the feedback was, of course, generally, or the other one was, Bill, why are you knocking on our doors? Why isn't that just a given that we want to have a safe sidewalk? So um, plus the hundred, I had three people I talked to um, did not want a sidewalk. And the, the, the sentiment there was, we've always not had a sidewalk. Why do we need a sidewalk now? Nobody's ever got a hurt before. Why do you think they're going to be hurt now? None of us can foresee that. I do believe that with two lanes, which is the new design rather than the single lane we have now, cars will likely drive a little faster. That's true. And uh, so not having a secure, you know, two foot shoulders on either side, I can see where I got big feet, you know, you're kind of, and you're, so and the other thing is parents shouldn't have to worry about a safe way to cross the bridge, uh, whether it's three parents or a hundred parents. So that's the, the, the count is 97% on a sidewalk and 90% of the people that signed this thing came from Gaysville, all ages. Um, and they signed for their partners and, and uh, some mothers were holding their kids. I mean, other kids, their parents had their child right there. It's, I wouldn't say visceral is too strong of a term, but there's a there's a strong sentiment that if we're going to have a new federal bridge let's let's include the sidewalk and that's why we're here does can uh and should the the school board here our our said school board weigh in and recommend to this the select board um having a sidewalk or not and i've not touched patrick your question yet but i wanted to give kind of the overview um i have a question does the bus go over the bridge into Gaysville, or are all the children coming from Gaysville across that bridge and picked up on the other they side? They cross the bridge right now. And now when the bridge is completed, will the bus go across the bridge and pick kids up in Gaysville? I doubt it. Um, I think right now, I, I'm having trouble because somebody else asked me that question, and that is where can the bus turn around safely so that's all, okay. all seasons of the year? And my knowledge of uh, Laurie Road and River Road and, and um, Kelly Road and uh, Pratt Road and they couldn't go up Lowry. Um, yeah. They just so can't do that. My next question then is how many houses what would you consider are within a child's walking distance I mean, to go across I the bridge? I used to walk a mile from there. That yeah. today's kids. Yeah. Well no, I mean <laughs> but when I was a kid there were you know there was it was always between five and ten kids getting dropped off. But in, in yeah. nowadays, like today, parents would not have you walk down off of Ultra I Mountain. see it all the time. You know, I live on Larry oh, Road. I, there's kids that walk up every day. And honestly, I, I was kind of back and forth about it before you had just mentioned, which makes me think more about it, is 
for me growing up, it was a one-way bridge. So there was only one vehicle going across and- At any time. And yeah, if there were kids or anybody on the bridge, it wasn't really a big deal. But now you are talking about two lanes, two vehicles, yeah. kids, people, whatever. And I mean, there's a good point to that because on the weekends, there it's there's as long many long as long 10 long. people standing on that bridge. Right. So, um, I mean, my initial thought is that um, I, on my support putting of, of sidewalk, I'm just not sure if it's something that it pertains to the school board. How many kids, like what, what does this really affect for it to come from a school? I mean, I may support it personally, but does, is it really something that we as a board um, can get involved in? Um, or, you know, this is, um, you know, a municipality issue and I mean, getting 100 signatures seems like, you know, you've got a, a, a good support two, uh, group. Two weekends is four days. Right, but it sounds well, to me like it's... you have a very good support behind you to go forward to this, to to state your claim and, and to... I think the, the elephant in the room um, is that the select board is very cost conscious, very cost conscious, very, very, very cost right. conscious. And what we can do is have the option to do is not only is we have an independent petition um, and uh, that sort of thing, but we can show that the school board has concern and we're, a, uh, that's an important um, organization for the community and we represent all the students. And so we have a right to be heard and we have a right to have an informed decision. I happen to think that um, I could have gotten 200 signatures and I don't think the decision would be changed because the calculus is cost of maintenance. Okay, now there's two ways to maintain a sidewalk on a street. One is you buy this sidewalk tractor and, uh, um, and then you have one of your town highway employees drive it. Bigger communities have that. And back in my day and where I came from, of course we did. And we had a standard that downtown, the sidewalks, if you walk, you have the same level of service as you do when you drive. And but that's, we're not there, we're rural. And so most rural communities that have sidewalks, hire them. It's like hiring a, 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 a person to, to plow your driveway. Okay, they hire that and you have contracts. And there's two types of contracts, one is, X dollars and no matter if we have 15 blizzards, that's the cost for the contractor to deliver that services. The other one is basically cost per storm or delivery. In other words, if I'm plowing once, okay, it's, that's what's gonna cost you. I plow a second time, a third time. And I think that's the most cost effective way in, in my estimate, it's really, you're talking about 3,000 or maybe could be less, 3,000 to 4,500 a year for plowing. They, this, the sanders that go up and down, the trucks, uh, will provide the salt and sand. I mean, just the, the spread of the spreaders. And what I'm recommending, and it, it's not only is that we speak to, because I think without our support, um, the odds of this happening are... Are, are pretty low, Amy, pretty low. And we're talking about, a, ain't it just awful for a hundred years? And I think that the key is, can we help financially? And uh, what I'd like to see, and I've got a resolution here, is that furthermore, that we'll commit to work with the select board on the operating costs. Not, to, not saying exactly how much, but saying we would help and then it seems to me that it makes all the sense of the world for them to say yes on the sidewalk then we've given them all the support they need and then michael uh, talks with jamie and they figure out what makes sense and that comes back to the select board and the select board says okay we can put it on the town meeting agenda the next year okay as, as a separate line item do you want to spend fifteen hundred dollars uh, maintaining the, the bridge and what Jamie comes up with, it would come back to this board and the board would say, gee, that seems a little rich or that seems to be reasonable. And 
This bridge isn't going to be in operation until 2027. So we've got two years, but to figure this thing out, but if the decision is made, no change, then VTrans is going to go ahead and there's no turning back. I mean, you can't rehab a bridge and add a sidewalk. Well, I guess, you know, uh, as a board, we need to really think, is this, yeah. is this a board issue? Is this a our oh, side the first board question. issue to be taken up? Um, okay, tell me that in, in the next 10 or 15 years when we have a kid hurt on the bridge. Yeah. Okay. We have to look forward and, you know, it's part of the Rochester's town responsibility to keep the sidewalks plowed and such for the safety of our kids going to school. And, you know, that's just, that's just part of the, the cost of doing, uh, uh, doing business as a, as a town. And like I said, I mean, I was neutral until I'm thinking about how it's two-way traffic now. It changes completely, <laughs> you know. I don't know. I, I would encourage us to to support the idea of of, um, of encouraging the select board to to uh, add a sidewalk to the bridge. Through a resolution or um, yes. Yes. Okay. Are you encouraged? So I, I just have to say before you, I have major concerns about the school district incurring the cost of contracting to clean sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of what you just said, Robert. Mm -hmm. The town of Rochester is responsible to, right. to clean the Rochester sidewalks. And so I am fully supportive of safe routes to school for kids right. and supportive, and I've been supportive to like work on grants with towns to get safe routes to school for kids. I am very concerned about mixing what I see a municipality responsibility yeah. to uphold sidewalks. I, agree. I would agree. And a school yeah. district clearance sidewalks because I don't know when that ends. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, it, we, but I think we can support I mean, the in, idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's we can support the idea, and and you know, the, and though I hear you saying that that may be what the select board wants to hear in order to pursue it. I'm not saying they're going to want to hear anything from me or the board. I'm just saying that what they're doing, everything I've heard from, and I've got a number of it's people that are being very honest with me, is it's dollars and cents, Bill. It's dollars and cents. And they don't want to spend money. But I think there's solutions to that. Like I said, it could be as simple as lines. And if you're talking about the sidewalk lines, well, it doesn't need to be a sidewalk line. It can be a bike path. That can get plowed. Yeah. Instead of calling it a bike path, people are going to walk on the bike path. You know, it's a white line with a. It's not as much of a sidewalk as yes. uh, as ideally it would be more safe possible. Yes. The, que the question, which is out of our, our purview, is is whether or not that meets the federal standards, which I'm sure are guiding the, yeah, the I, grant that supports this. I'm not an engineer, Patrick, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd be yeah. very surprised VTrans or the feds would be comfortable with this. Now, they, maybe the feds have delegated to VTrans, but um, because that, that sounds, the, the other option to me is you build the sidewalk, feds are paying for it, six, to, six inch reveal, Okay, and you post it every year, you know, and it's a tell V trans, it says just right now it's posted for load limits. Okay, uh, and big heavy loads can't go across our bridge right now. So another option is build a safe sidewalk that's going to serve everybody crossing the bridge 340, 45 days a year. And then in those 20 days that might be snow covered. Okay, uh, we post it and say, um, do not use sidewalk and we don't maintain it. And it goes into the people walking the street like they've done for all these years, but at least you have that safe sidewalk for everybody else in the summertime, fall and spring. And um, so what I'm trying to do is to get them to get the thing built. We can work out a solution here. Um, and that's one of them that's, the feds pay for the safe sidewalk and then we decide how we're going to maintain it given how much dollars that are committed uh, or available and i happen to think that the select board 
they're not going to maybe not make that decision, but give it to the town meeting. The town meeting voted 40,000 last year for sheriff. Remember? I mean, they've, and the, the town says, we don't want to spend $3,000 or $4,000 for plowing the sidewalk for the contractor. Then we post it. Do not walk on the sidewalk. So again, that is all town That's stuff. town. So and we're, we're coming like up with options here. To... We're coming up with options here. But I really think it helps to have another institution as important as this institution saying, this should be done. This should be done. And uh, I hear what Jamie's saying, but I don't want that to get in the way of saying. No, I think they're separate things, Bill. Yeah. I think saying that you, as a resolution, that you believe safe routes to school are important and that the select board should consider that in regards to building a sidewalk on the bridge is different than also yes. saying Absolutely. that we're going to then help maintain it. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Yes. And, and just to, um, when I was on the school board in my previous life, <laughs> as a lot younger, I was always arguing with, with uh, the people to think long term. You can't just think five years or 10 years. You have to think 15, 20, 25 years. We don't know what how many kids are going to be crossing in 10 or 15 years. You're don't saying be flying. You know, <laughs> we, it's, it goes up and down in Absolutely. cycles and such. We'll have all the, the old people will die off and we'll have the young young yeah. people we hope occupying. You know, and, and it, it's if if unless they want to be a a, a, a second home community, you have to do things that indicate to you that you're attracting you know, young families and are concerned about the safety of the kids. Yeah. Uh, JC, do you have uh, any comment you mm -hmm. wanted? Uh, I'm on the same page as Jamie, um, you know, while supporting the safety of the students, I don't want to, I don't want um, to um, support feeling like we have to maintain as a district i don't think that's a district okay but you are in favor of uh the board uh uh recommending to the select board to to encourage yep. uh, to, them to relook at the safe passage yep yep yeah okay do we how do you feel about it um i think we should recommend to have it safer for the kids. I don't see how we could do otherwise. Yeah, the uh, concern, we recommend that they revisit. I feel like the package. resolution you show in that draft does get it, doesn't it? Yeah, I've got one draft. And the reason we need to act soon is that the select board's meeting this Thursday, and this is really the last bite of the apple we'll have. Michael's been kind enough to include me on the agenda. And it's a pretty full agenda. Um, but this needs to be heard because I understand from D-Trans that if, uh, if the select board doesn't include a sidewalk in an affirmative way, then the design of which is no sidewalk, 24 feet. Okay. So what's your is, resolution? Is then? So here it is. Everybody listen. And I've got hard copies if you want to look at it. And, but yes, I think please. we need to vote it and then get all the signatures here at JCL JCU. Um, I only have three, so let me pass this down to Amy and this one down to Jamie. And uh, the rest of us, you're going to listen real hard to them. Okay. Resolution uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Resolution. At a meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board on September 9th, 2024, at the Rochester campus, the following resolution was adopted by vo board vote. The Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board respectfully requests that the Stockbridge Select Board and the Vermont Agency of Transportation approve and include a sidewalk for the safe passage of pedestrians of all ages, including Stockbridge school children, in the design, development, and construction of the new Gatesville Bridge. And then there's a um, lines for each one of us to sign, as well as the superintendent. 
So that's what I'd like to move. Okay, so oh, your, your... okay the resolution has been moved and seconded. Um, is there any further discussion? Seeing no discussion, um, all in favor of the resolution bill just read, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'm like, Amy, you've got a hard copy, right? Why don't we start with that then? And if you'd sign it, and we're basically just signing our name. We've already said when we signed it. And um, and then if you could spread that around. And Jamie, I think it's important for um, the public to know that our superintendent supports this. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Um, next is executive session. So I'm sorry, but you guys kind of all the public have to leave the room. We can, okay. <laughs> well, like I said earlier, you can have left at any time. We're not, you don't have to wait for it to be just class dismissed for that. All right. So, but thank you for staying and, and sure. listening to you, our meeting. You can come back if you want. Yeah, you can like, you know, perhaps. Yeah, we will reserve the chairs. If not, it depends what the next time you want to yeah. at your house. Exactly. Uh, is there anything you want to do before the executive session? Some executive sessions. New hires presentation. Well, we need to move up public comment and everything. We can do that if we want. Or you know. It does make it easier if we move uh, executive session to the very end. Okay. Uh, I, I move we we move executive session to the end of. The End of the agenda. Okay, excellent. Well, then we are going to continue with the agenda. Um, we're moving. Oh, Robert moved that it should be moved. Did somebody second, second. it? Pat seconds it. All in favor of moving the executive session to the end of the agenda? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, so we've now moved the executive session to the end of the agenda. So we're going to continue with our current the agenda on number 11 new hires or resignations. Um, so to update you guys from August, we did, we have a fully staffed uh, teaching staff. Yay! So we welcome Emma Hudson, who is our 456 classroom teacher, specifically math and science in Stockbridge. Uh, she comes to us from Rutland Boys and Girls Club, running some of their nice. programming for that age group. Um, and she was a South Royalton High School graduate, so she's coming back to the area, which is great. And then uh, Dominic Smith is our first and second grade teacher in Rochester, and uh, he comes to us with some background in after school programming as well as um, theater programming with kids. And he's a Rochester High School graduate. So it's great to have some folks back. Um, and Emma did her elementary at endorsement through Cass. Yes. Oh, it's that's important that, yeah, I just want people yeah. to know she is a trained teacher. Yes. That's all. And then um, our behavior specialists who are working with through Claire Martin, uh, Alicia Wukatorski, uh, Miss Alicia, <laughs> joined us today for her first day. So she'll be between both campuses providing support to the kiddos. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any public comment? Yes, Tara. Hey, Amy, it's Keith. Um, hold on just a second. I'm, I'm sorry. Keith. If you could just, yes, hi, Keith. If you could just hold on one second. Um, our business manager has raised her hand, and I'm, go ahead, uh, Tara. Thank you. Sorry. I just needed to circle back around to my report for a quick second, if that's okay. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you, Keith. If you could hold on just one second and um, circle back to the business manager's report, which is 6.3. Go ahead, Tara. Thank you. Um, as we're going through our annual audit for fiscal year 24, I need two board members to volunteer to do the fraud inquiries of governance questionnaires. <laughs> <laughs> there are only 10 questions. I did it last year. <laughs> you did. You and Bill, I think, did it last year. I'm fine. <laughs> Whatever. Bill, has anybody asked to you? Bill, Bill has volunteered. Uh, is there another board member that's willing to volunteer? I thought I did it last year, but I'm fine doing it. 
<laughs> Thank you. I will email it to both of you this evening. Okay. I thought it was, was JC and I that did it last year. I thought it was uh, you and me. Oh, Bill, I think you might have done it for the full board. I thought it was. Oh, was that? Full yeah. board. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry to go back in the agenda. And thank you. All right. Okay, so now I'm sorry, we will now go ahead on to um, 12 public comment. Hey, Amy, um, it's Keith. Hi, go ahead, Keith. A um, few questions. One is, um, I know you got, you were discussing earlier on about um, proposals for window replacements and things along those lines. Uh, are those proposals made public? Yes. Okay, so in other words, if you get, I'm assuming you get at least three bids on every project that we do. Um, so the, um, the, the, yeah, it goes so, to EEI, so, so we can explain that. Yeah, so we, we're currently under contract for, for performance contracting through energy efficient investments, which Keith, it, I, you probably even know what performance contracting is, but essentially they guarantee efficiency savings like through doing things like lighting projects, heating, HVAC, windows would fall under that. They essentially then go out and get bids for us. And as the owners, meaning the district supervisors, we then can review those bids and they essentially okay, act so, GC. So, so as a district, we don't receive bids directly. We are receiving bids through a third party company we get to approve whether the whether we okay the bids or not if the board decides to go through performance contracting no no i understand that but we're leaving it up to this third party company to present the bids to the board that's what we're doing currently right now unless the board wants to go out to rfp for bids and i wasn't part of the conversation when you guys had it so okay now based on my ex experience and what my past life uh, we always did RFPs because we always thought that that was the best way to get the um, most accurate bid for any um, construction job we were con contemplating. And we also got to ask questions directly to the individual uh, companies that were bidding on our project. Wouldn't that make the most sense? I would say to you, I think it makes the most sense unless, but I don't think those companies, they're going to guarantee you savings of which EEI has to per their, their RFP. So they're going to need to provide our board with an overview of how much efficiency this window replacement is going to be. And they guarantee up to 80% of that match <clears throat> over the life. Right. But, but, but we both know that ultimately we're paying for that insurance policy somehow i totally hear that you don't agree with with that the performance contracting aspect and you think the board should go out to bid and certainly i think if that's what the board wants to do we could do that well to me that would be the most efficient way to make sure or ensure that the community is getting the most um most for their money um second i want to move on to the last discussion which the board had at length with regard to the bridge. I guess I'm trying to understand why the school district is getting involved in what a town issue is. Um, I don't understand why the district would even consider putting themselves out on a limb for liability with respect to something they don't control. So uh, somebody needs to explain to me why we're even tackling that issue. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to as the district's liability. Um, what the board just agreed to is to request that the Stockbridge Select Board relook at possibly putting in a sidewalk to ensure safe passage of our school children across that bridge to get on a bus to come to school um so that is what okay we... and how many how many school children cross that bridge currently three of them walk across the bridge okay so three students 
then Perfect, we are that's responsible just, that is just today. Okay. That's just today. That is not okay, tomorrow, tomorrow. That is not 10 years from now. We don't know. It's an unknown. Okay, so I guess you're projecting that we're going to grow tremendously for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, the other thing is there was also a suggestion that we would share in the cost for maintenance. Correct, but that was not um, something the board agreed on. Okay, so so the board's just looking to put pressure on the Stockbridge Select Board? They're just asking that the Select Board relook at it, yes. Okay, um, and Jamie is in favor of this? I'm in favor for our kids to come to school safely. Jamie, you didn't answer my question. Are you in favor? of the board, the school board, asking the Stockbridge Select Board to consider this proposal? Consider safe routes to school. Yes, I signed. Jamie, Jamie, yes, okay, thank you, Jamie. Keith. That answered your question, thank you. Yeah. Amy, I am tired of being dismissed. Go on the record, because I will contact the state. Thank you. Yes, Robert? Um, I would like to respond that one, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's only three or four kids right now. It could be, as, as Patrick has mentioned, it was a lot more kids in the past. We could very well have that in the future. We're, we're talking about not five, 10, we're talking about 50 years, 100 years, however long the bridge is there. 100. So, you know, it's. Okay. Uh, excuse, excuse me, you you do not have the floor. Okay, I, I want to respond. Excuse to that. me, board of you order. do not have the floor. My board member does. Thank you. Okay, and and you know, is by via Robert's rules of order, I think he's he's had his say on this subject. So, um, uh, let's see. So, with with regard to the bridge, I think it's fair for us to express our opinion, it's just an opinion of the board, to uh, uh, to the select board. Um, you know, there's, yes, there are costs, uh, there's, but other towns bear those costs for the sake of safety all the time. And I'll remind Keith that um, a few years ago, the Stockbridge Select Board unanimously voted in favor of keeping Stockbridge and Rochester together as a district. Um, that's what we have boards for, to express opinions and to listen and to act appropriately. Excellent, thank you. Well, that concludes public comment. All right, so uh, number three. Our, our next meeting is Monday, October 7th at 6 p.m. at the Stockbridge uh, campus. Um, is there any future agenda items right now? Otherwise, please um, email me or Jamie. Great. Then we are going to go to our number 10, executive session. I move we enter executive session for the purpose of real estate and contract. And second. I invite in the administration. And we'd like to invite the administration to join. So moved. So moved. Thank you. You need to oh. the vote. Okay. There's been a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of moving into executive session for a real estate and contract matter. I'm inviting the administration to signify by saying aye. 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 Oh. Yep. So moved. Okay. Is there a aye. second? Second. Aye. All in favor? Uh, all in favor of exiting executive session. Aye. 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 Excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. Coming out of executive session, the board directs the administration to work on specifics of an MOU for the use of the high school building upon successful sale of the high school building to the town of Rochester to expand educational programming for the Rochester Stockbridge students. So second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.